eyes closed. A most warmly welcome to another total healing series. We have a battle to fight. And everybody must fight this battle. It is dangerous to keep quiet. It is dangerous to assume that it will not concern you. As we pray this first prayer, if you are in this meeting, you have been hearing strange voices. Find a way quickly to the altar. The trouble we want to deal with now is what I call evil call. Evil call. A lot of people are receiving calls internally, externally, which they respond to, and problems come. May you now receive evil calls. Let your voice be the loudest. Don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours.
Just... Thank you, Jesus. name we pray. Say anywhere. Say it with authority. My names are being mentioned for evil. Last one. Say powers. Pain, evil shrine. To destroy my life. Sisters, can I hear you shouting this? I think the sisters should be more aggressive. The sisters are not aggressive enough. <laughs> Let the brother roar like thunder. <laughs> Before I leave this place, <laughs> damn, in the name of Jesus. Continue to lay your hands upon us. Continue to anoint your people here. At the end of this meeting, let all the glory belong to you. Let all the shame belong to the enemy. Let all the blessings belong to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In louder, amen. Let's have a God bless you. When I under total healing sessions, I've explained to you the first time where we say total healing. There is healing of the body, physical body, there is healing of the soul. There is healing of the spirit. There is healing of career. There is healing of marriage. There is healing of finances. There is healing of career. There are healings in various areas. When what ought to be is not what is going on. The purpose of prayer is to demand that what ought to be must be. This is what ought to be. It is not what ought to be. You now pray to ensure that what ought to be must be. You are supposed to bless generations. There are no blessing generations. So what ought to be is that you must be a blessing to generations. So 
when you observe, you know what ought to be. And you now see that what ought to be is not what is happening. The purpose of prayer changes it to what ought to be. A, bl a blessing to generations. What's happening now that is that you are not a blessing to anybody. So what ought to be is not what is happening. Prayer changes it. Healing also. A man is supposed to be healthy. But there is a disease in the body. Disease is in the body. What ought to be is that he ought to be healthy. But that's not so. So now we demand that what ought to be has to be. This is why prayer is sometimes forceful and violent. Because what ought to be is not what is on ground. Something has shifted what ought to be into another arena and converted it to what ought not to be. So the prayer would drag it away. Drag it away. That was a message preached many years back. It was titled Recovery from the Mouth of the Lion. David said, I pursued after the lion who stole my lamb. And I took the lamb out of the mouth of the lion. Then he fought the lion, tore the lion. So many blessings of people, beloved. We are currently in the mouth of the lion. It's prayer that will grab the lion, grab what is in the mouth of the lion, drag it out of the mouth of the lion, and destroy the lion. So that's the purpose of healing to make what ought to be to be. Demand that it is so. So today, we're looking at dealing with vain labor syndrome. Vain labor. Work, that is working in vain. This is why you must pay attention and pray very well when the time comes. It's a sickness, but not a physical sickness. It's a spiritual sickness. Failure at the age of success, too. It's a sickness. Not physical sickness, but spiritual. In Genesis 26, I read from verse 12. And it would be nice to open to that place and follow up. Genesis 26, from verse 12. Genesis 26. Genesis we can read it verse twelve. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year. An hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Isaac sowed in the land and received hundredfold harvest. And the Lord blessed him. And the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possession of herds and a great store of servants. And 
the Philistines envied him. And the Philistines envied him. And the Philistines envied him because he became great. I'm praying for somebody here. All the envious witchcraft that are against your moving forward, that are fighting you because of envy, with a tenfold amen. Bury them now in the name of Jesus. Louder. Verse 15. For all the words which his father's servants had dig in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines have stopped them and filled them with earth. The words which his father's servants had dig in the days of Abraham. The Philistines have stopped the words. Verse 16. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. They drove him away because they say he was too mighty. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gera and dwelt there. And Isaac dig again the wells of water which they had dig in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. The wells Abraham dug, those Philistines stopped the wells. They put sand inside them. But now Isaac now began to dig those wells again. I was calling them the names that his father called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley. There they found a well of springing water. And the headmen of Gera, the place is just moved to Gera. This strife with Isaac's headsman. They say the water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek because they strove with him. He dug. He found a spring of water. In the new land he ran to Gera. And now the people came. So it's our home. It's our home. It's their home. They were not the one that digged it. They didn't find the water. Now they found flowing water there. You can say, it's our home. They strove with him. So Isaac didn't fight. Just left it. Left it. 21. And they dig another well. And strove for that also. He called the name of the place Sitna. He dug a second well again. The same people came back. It's our own. They took it away. Verse 22. Two wells gone. And they removed from thence. And dig another well. And for that they strove not. He called the name of it Rehoboth. And said, For now the Lord had made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Bathsheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night. And said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee. 
I will bless you and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and call upon the name of the Lord and pitch his sons there and there as his servant Ziggy well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gera and Ahuzat, one of his friends, and Fikol, the chief captain of the army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you. And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let there be an oath between us, even between us and thee, and let us make covenant with thee. That thou will do us no hurt, as we have not touched thee, as we have done unto thee nothing but good. And I've sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. And he made them a feast. They did eat and drink. This is a very powerful story. Isaac had a fundamental problem that he did not detect. The success of Isaac was short-lived. His success was not lasting. He was expelled. And what he labored for, they take it. What he labored for is transferred. All he labored for was transferred to another person. It's a tragedy when a power allows you to work very hard only for satanic transfer to happen. A man built a house every night voices were screaming at the roof. They came there broke the roof down nothing the workers who came to work didn't hear anything there they didn't say anything they didn't hear anything so he had to leave the house because even after the workers had left the screaming continued he went and built another house all of a sudden there was a court action that he had bought the land from the wrong person and the court said remove your house from the place of course, it's impossible. He's built a big house there. He lost it. Went to the third one. Third one collapsed. There was something wrong. Something is fighting his effort. Something is fighting his labor. There are five persons that the Bible describes as going to foreign land. Five persons. They leave their land, go to foreign land. They leave their land. Go to foreign land. Joseph was one. Abraham too did. All of them did very well, except Isaac. All labored and enjoyed their labor. Jacob labored and brought back all his God to his father's house. Joseph too labored. Joseph came into success at the age of 30 and died at the age of 110. Joseph had 80 straight years of enjoyment. Queen Esther was a slave girl. He went, she went to foreign land. She became the first lady, the queen. She ended up at the age of 80 in a foreign land. Mordecai too went to a foreign land and became a prime minister in a foreign land. Daniel entered the Entered Babylon at the age of maybe 16, 17. 
He was an advisor to four kings. He was like a prime minister. Only the success of Isaac was short lived. One great prayer everybody should pray with anger. This is what I'm going to call now. I will know those who love their destiny. <laughs> As you pray this prayer, can you raise up your right hand to the heavens and shout this loud and clear? Assigned to transfer my portion. Open your mouth and pray this prayer. See what is happening. Somebody is breaking through. Sit down. Reuben had a portion. Reuben only me. His portion was transferred to Judah. Esau had a portion. His portion was transferred to Jacob. Judas had a portion. Judas not His portion was transferred to Paul. Are you here? You've tasted wealth before. But it, not, it did not last again. Once you had it, but the enemy brought you low. Can you raise up your right hand and say, I am rising again? One thing I want you to know, everyone here, the last chapter of your story has not been written. You shall rise again. You shall shine faster. The Holy Ghost shall make you to rise again. In the name of Jesus. Wells of the father of Isaac were blocked by the Philistines. They reduced him from many wells to one. And those areas is practically desert land. Digging well is hard work in that place. Sometimes you have to dig up to 250,000 feet down. The ones that he got from his father, they stopped it. The one he did, they stopped it. The one he did, they, get, they stopped it. And after stopping it, I came and said, we see that God is with you. So, <laughs> make, make a covenant with us that he will not fight us. I'm praying. At any power challenging your enlargement of coast shall die violently in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Have 
Reduction from many. Reduction from many things. To one. From many to one. Had come upon Isaac. The spirit of reduction has entered. There are people who can say, Hey, I used to have many accounts, now there is only one. I used to have many shops, but there is now one. One. I used to have many employees, but now no. Isaac now got to well number four. And call it Rehoboth. On his own volition. Without anybody chasing him. He left that one. And located that well and went to Bathsheba. He abandoned that well, went to Bathsheba. Read your Bible well. Isaac's problem did not stop. He did not make progress until he raised up an altar to God. Like his father. Abraham raised three altars. Jacob raised three altars. The altars you raise represent your spirituality. Isaac was physically and spiritually weak. Father Abraham was a fighter and a prophet. Jacob was a fighter and a prophet. Jacob even fought God. <laughs> That's why he had this prophetic gift to be able to transfer blessings without even opening his eyes. When he cannot even see them. Jacob was a prophet and a seer. Isaac lived by feelings. Isaac did well number five. Did well number six. But when he raised an altar to God, his enemies came to negotiate. I'm praying for somebody here. Those who hate you begin to negotiate peace with you. In the name of Jesus. That's a story that I read. You may say this is wicked. But it is this spirit. This man could not find a wife until he was 57. At 57, it was only, only a girl of 24, 25 that agreed to marry him. And immediately they got married. Her first pregnancy, she had twins. One year later, she had another one. So, three children. Within three years. One day, a young lady was coming from the market. This is a man nobody wanted to marry. Apart from this young girl. One day the young girl was coming from the market. All of a sudden he saw the husband's car. And looked at it. There was a lady by his side. So she now began to follow them. Follow them. She found that they parked at the front of a hotel. She too parked her own far away. She, she gave them time to enter the hotel very well. She now went inside. And was screaming. Hey, that is man that I just entered there now. Woman, woman, just said. I need to talk to him. His house is on fire. I saw his fire. His house is on fire. Tell me where he is. Ordinarily, hotel receptionist will not give you the room number of any stranger. But when they had house on fire, he said, yes, yes, yes. He came here with his wife. Let's go, let's go. 
They took it there. They took it there. And they banged it up. When they entered, both him and his girlfriend of strange man he brought, they were half naked. When the man saw his wife, he almost fainted. He prostrated, started begging. That girl did not say one word. She just walked out. Then did something strange, demonic, and cruel. I have never seen such wickedness before. This lady took the three children, went to the bridge, and threw all three into the water. And said, you old man, you saw somebody to marry you. You had three children. You are messing about. So go and start afresh. Vain labor. Vain labor. The man died a miserable death. They threw the lady into life jail. She, was, she didn't even look unhappy in court. I'm praying for somebody here this day. Every shame is removed from your feet. In the name of Jesus, wherever you have been failing, you shall succeed. Wherever you are on the floor, you shall rise. Every good thing you touch shall prosper. The anointing to succeed shall come upon your life. God will move you from nowhere to somewhere. God will move you from being a no to a celebrity. In the name of Jesus, God will move you from being rejected to being accepted. In the name of Jesus, where you have been frustrated, you will be celebrated. In the name of Jesus, your generation shall hear your voice. Every power trying to silence you, God will silence your silences. In the name of Jesus, you will move from obscurity to popularity. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of vain labor, every power that has been stealing from you, they must return what they have stolen in the name of Jesus. Amen. All eyes closed now. All eyes closed. In case you are in this meeting tonight and you are not born again, whatever you are, why all eyes are closed? Just raise up your right hand. Say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Who said that short prayer with me? Immediately we close. Find a way to the altar. Here. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Check that you have your prayer paper in your hand. Take that paper now and begin to pray. God bless you as you do so.
Amen. Amen. Rise to your feet now. Strange prayers to pray. But don't say, I don't understand. Just pray the prayers. Shout this after me loud and clear. Walk like an elephant. Eat like an ant. Syndrome. Can you say that again? I signed against my life. Death. In the name of Jesus. Turn towards his altar Makatela Kayabo Shelia Ribo Sepia Kayabo Father, let his hands carry the fire of God. Let his hands carry the power of God. Let his hands carry the energy for healing and deliverance. As many infirmities as these hands will touch, let the touching. Bring forth signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have any infirmity in any part of your body, smile the place aggressively 21 times, shouting, Go back to your senders. Let's go. Do it aggressively. Begin to check your body now. Begin to do what you could not do before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is healing coming on top of somebody. From the top of the head to the sole of the feet. The powers of eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood. They are releasing you completely now. Yes. Just if we cannot see, begin to see. If we cannot hear, begin to hear. Cannot use your legs, begin to use your legs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
this total healing service pour the anointing on your palm right now father let your glory your power your anointing, your strength, the resurrection power, flow upon this oil in the name of Jesus. Let this oil break every yoke of vain labor in the name of Jesus. That is all break every yoke of bad luck. In the name of Jesus, that is all cause your healing power to flow. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Rub that oil on your forehead aggressively. Thank you, Jesus. Put fresh oil on your palm now. And use it to anoint your legs. You can sit down and do that. Anoint your legs. Thank you, Jesus. Your leg is a symbol of your movement. It's a symbol of your destiny. A symbol of your movement. Into your destiny. Yes, that feet shall trample upon every serpent and scorpion and upon every part of the enemy. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. You can put the oil away now. Don't forget that this coming Saturday is Palm of Changers. We we'll continue with our deep deliverance series. Which will terminate in June. This is the second edition. And when it terminates in June, the June edition will be at prayer city. Thank you, Jesus. So this particular one is happening here. Remember to collect the prayer points. Eat your last meal on Thursday night. Then on Friday, no food. And we gather here on Saturday morning. Thank you, Jesus. Bring out your manna water now. While your amen roar like fire and like thunder. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, let your power flow upon this water in the name of Jesus. Let this water cancel every yoke of the enemy. Let this water cancel every unrising of darkness. Let this water cancel every ordination of death. Let this water can cancel every bad luck. Let this water become the water of healing, the water of deliverance, the water of power, the water of glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The Lord blesses you from Zion. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Father, all the prayer requests answer them by fire. Let the writers become testifiers. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.